It was 1985. I was the director of a college career and placement office on a large university campus in the Midwest. Each spring, the engineering and business graduates lined up for a day of interviews with companies like IBM, GE, and the big, then, eight accounting firms that came to recruit fresh hires. The candidates looked pretty similar. White, male, and from the same geographical area. The rare woman was sprinkled in. I remember one day in particular. A long-haired, blue-jean-clad company recruiter from the San Francisco Bay Area walked in, and he was all anyone could talk about. Our students felt uncomfortably overdressed in their IBM-appropriate uniform of blue suits and red ties. Then we learned he was representing a new technology company that came with the name of a fruit, Apple. The Apple rep's unique appearance was actually a peek into the future, a future in which the traditional roles of the workplace were being upended in more ways than dress alone. Blue jeans and long hair on men were one form of self-expression that took hold in workplaces. Many other forms of diversity followed. We now all know that to perform at the highest levels, large and small organizations must diversify their workforces to mirror the diverse categories of people whom they are attempting to serve. Women, people of color, LGBTQIA, and those with disabilities are some of the most obvious groups. Fortunately, more organizations are now also considering an expanded definition of diversity, categories like lifestyles, personality characteristics, perspectives, opinions, family composition, and education level or tenure, according to the Gallup organization. In their research, Gallup learned what much of the current literature on diversity already espouses. Employees in inclusive environments feel appreciated for their unique characteristics and therefore comfortable sharing their ideas and other aspects of their true and authentic selves. And this connects to the productivity of the organization as they capture more ideas, creativity, and many perspectives. Strengthening the argument for diverse workforces that reflect the real world, founder of LinkedIn, Reid Hoffman, has warned of the danger of companies becoming monocultures and echo chambers of uniformity. Here's the danger of a monoculture, he said in an episode about blind spots for his podcast, Masters of Scale. It starts telling itself self-reinforcing stories that can diverge from reality. Thankfully, the business and ethical case for diversity is no longer in question. However, there is one area of diversity that is not being talked about enough. This aspect of diversity, which falls under the umbrella category of neurodiversity, is temperament, and it includes introversion and extroversion. Neurodiversity refers to the different ways the brain can work and interpret information. It highlights that people naturally think about things differently. We have different interests and motivations and are naturally better at some things and poorer at others. 